Hey everyone, another day, another handheld, with this one being Palkiddy V10. The Palkiddy V10 is approaching a couple of months old now, so apologies for the late coverage, but thank you to MechDIY for providing this review unit. You can currently pick it up from them for $42 using the coupon code JIM16, and I'll include the affiliate link in the description if you'd like to support the channel. The Palkiddy V10 is a bit of an oddity in that it's powered by the same RK3326 chip, that we used to see in almost every handheld a few years ago when I first started the channel. And the RK3326, alongside no wireless capabilities and a single mono speaker, does make me feel a bit like we've stepped into the past here. But with its low price and low profile, the V10 might have a shot at being a good gifting handheld for those looking to get into retro gaming. So in terms of specs, as mentioned, the Palkiddy V10 is powered by the RK3326. So that will give us access to very few Dreamcast, PSP and Nintendo 64 titles, but we'll be much more comfortable with the PlayStation 1 catalogue and below. The 3.5 inch screen with a 2 to 3 ratio will make GBA games in particular look very good, and the replaceable 3000 mAh battery is pretty impressive given its size, as is its easily pocketable weight of 165 grams. We don't have any wireless capabilities, but we do have one gig of RAM and the excellent Arc OS as its stock firmware, which we always love to see. So straight out of the box, the Palkiddy V10's build quality is certainly not bad for a budget handheld. There is a couple of quirks here, like the mono speaker and lack of any dedicated volume buttons with volume control allotted to quick keys. But on top, we've got the two USB-C ports and recessed power and reset buttons. Underneath, we've got the micro SD card slot and headphone jack, while both sides are clear of any I.O. On the back, we actually have a removable battery compartment, which is relatively neat, though a consideration if buying for children. And we've got the inline shoulder buttons we've seen on quite a few vertical handhelds to date. Moving on to the controls, the Palkiddy V10 does a good job overall for a budget handheld. To get the annoyances out of the way, the minus and plus shaped hotkeys allow you to control retro arc and things like the volume brightness, but are a little bit too close to the face buttons, especially for my personal preference, although I do have bigger hands. I did quickly get used to their placement, and they are hotkeys, so I need to press in combination to trigger anything, but I certainly would have preferred central hotkeys and the dedicated volume controls here. The face buttons in particular are better than expected at this price point, which, with their minor aggression around each button, gives a little bit of more room to breathe and ends up with them feeling comfortable and responsive, and they don't recess too far down as a consequence. Equally, the D-pad is nice and rounded, really responsive, and again doesn't recess too far down into the shell thanks to these little recessed edges. The shoulder buttons are okay. They've got that crunchy, clicky sound that's associated with these style of inline shoulder buttons, and although they're not super shaky in their sitting, they're not above average like the rest of the controls are. Speaking of above average though, the Palkiddy V10 does come preloaded with ArcOS, which is a great all-round firmware, which we've covered a number of times in the channel. It gives you total flexibility to tinker to your preferred setup, and it's certainly great to not have any firmware issues with a budget handheld, and can only really say that it makes the lack of wireless capabilities missed even more because of it. With that said though, I'll cut some gameplay footage now before summarising up at the end.
Ultimately, if you're looking for a retro gaming handheld with a particular focus on GBA, on a budget and don't mind dealing with the lack of volume buttons and having to do some tweaking in ArcOS to make the most of its aging processor, then the V10 does give you mostly decent controls and build quality for that lower price. That's it for now though, thanks so much for watching.